From the center of the galaxy, this is Force Center, a show about Star Wars pop culture and the ultimate adventure, life itself. This particular episode is Subjective Wars. We decide between two things, which is going to win. What are the metrics? How do we decide? We don't know. We will figure it out. All we know is that it's two things that we like. So this is Torturous. I'm Joseph Scrimshaw. I'm Ken Napsok, ready to fight it out with people I love. Mm, and I'm Jennifer Landa. I'm here to make peace. <laughs> <laughs> with lovely curtains. And we have two <laughs> wonderful guests, as you can see from Star Wars Explained. It's Alex and Molly Damon. Hello. Hello. I'm here to ruin friendships. <laughs> gonna... Oh my gosh. <laughs> you, you're doing the internet right, sir. Yeah, we're going to walk away from this not friends anymore. <laughs> Someone's I'm gonna getting kicked off Star Wars them. Island, yeah. I'm going to somehow make new friends. Um. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> I'm sure it's already happening in the YouTube comments that you are making new friends. Molly is already correct. Uh, well, our horrible decision for this particular episode is two ships in Star Wars that people hate kind of like. The Millennium Falcon versus the Ghost. Uh, we like to start out mm -hmm. with just taking the temperature. So, Molly, I would like to start with you. Before we've even discussed at all, are you going into this with a bias that you have an answer that you've already decided? Not really, because a lot of times when I'm doing one thing versus the other, I have a lot of stipulations and variables that I have to think about. So <laughs> this one's this one's tough for me. I don't have a clear winner just yet. Oh, OK. So Molly's in play. <laughs> Her vote is up for grabs. <laughs> Alex, how about you? Uh, I think I'm leaning one way, but I, I also have the same idea in my head. It really depends on the metric that we decide mm. over time to go with. Uh, but I, I do think I, I know where I'm going to wind up. Oh, okay. You are, you're a uh, poker player. Uh, you, you're letting us <laughs> know right. that you have a preference, but should not I, what should it I is. say it? Okay. It's I'm totally leaning, up to you if you want to. I'm leaning card. Millennium Falcon, but oh. there are, there are a lot of good arguments for the ghost. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, first blood is drawn. The ghost is already bleeding. <laughs> uh, Jennifer, do you have a bias going in? A hundred percent, but I can be swayed. I, I thought that I don't want, well, I want to know everyone's picks first. I thought that there were going to be a lot of <laughs> ghost picks. Maybe not because I'm leaning towards the Falcon. Of course. Mm. All right, Ken, are you mm. also going to wound the ghost right off the bat? <laughs> I, I, I know where I'm starting with this, but I don't know where I'm going to end up. Uh, and that's a testament to both ships, but it's a testament to new Star Wars really grabbing onto my heart early on. Even if I want to have an OT bias being that's what I grew up with and me being a Han guy, it's hard to just completely say Falcon. That's where I'll start with. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I go into all these ones that we set up that, you know, I, we're picking topics and we're just trying to find like, what are two things that people really love or that are hard to choose between? And some of them just end up being generational. And it's not yeah. like the OT generation owns the Falcon. The Falcon is an icon of Star Wars, but mm -hmm. I am super neurotic and have anxiety about my own bias of like, I don't want to just be like, I grew up with the Falcon. So of course it's the best. It's always the best. Mm -hmm. uh, and the ghost is absolutely amazing. And there's some metrics by which I would absolutely choose the ghost. So I'm going in a uh, torn right away. Um, so, Molly, you mentioned uh, stipulations. What does your mind go to first when, when trying to make this decision? What are you thinking about? I'm So, for me, when I think about the Falcon, if, if I'm going to choose the Falcon, I'm thinking of choosing Lando's Falcon. Oh. Mm -hmm. Back when it was, like, a little more sleek, a little more fly, you know, he had the wet <laughs> bar in there. It's, it's just a little bit classier, a little cleaner. A little more that's you mm. just you just made closet. this hell for me you made yeah. this hell yeah. for me yeah. because what i was thinking about I, I was only this is my bias i was picturing hans falcon and i was thinking about the speed the cool factor and then it was like i don't want to live in a dorm room the ghost <laughs> is a nice family home and i was thinking about how nice it was like that's what the ghost really has going for it for me but you've taken it away, Molly, because I would <laughs> happily live in Lando's classy bachelor pad, his swinging, mm -hmm. you know, 60s London conversation pit starship. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially mm. if it comes with the closet. 
than all the drinks. <laughs> Come on. That's kind mm-hmm. of cool. closet in a bar and it goes fast. Come on. <laughs> uh, Alex, how are you, how are you affected by the livability of these ships? Well, yeah, it seems like now we're starting to, to move towards a, which ship do you actually want to own and live in? And mm. I would lean more towards the ghost because it, it has separate rooms for each individual person. You can have, your whole found family on it. It's also far more reliable. How many times does the ghost break down in Star Wars Rebels versus the Falcon constantly breaking down? Now, yeah, Lando's is a different story. Uh, But Han's Falcon is just falling apart. It always needs repairs. I'm not a handy person. I would much rather just have, I guess the ghost is like a a Honda Civic that's just like an old reliable car. Mm that is going to last for a long time. It's also mm. got the Phantom, which is great. So livability, I, I think I go for the ghost. That's mm. true. That Technically, mm. that's two ships. Mm. Yeah. You're picking oh, the yeah. ghost. Although, although <laughs> Lando's Falcon Lando? kind yeah. of has two. It's got that's the true. escape pod. Yeah, the uh, escape pod. Well, and, and isn't yeah. the ghost a lot bigger than the Falcon, too? It is bigger, right? So it's yeah. more like yeah. a, a minivan. <laughs> <laughs> You've got your whole family in it. Right. It's fan life. Hashtag the, fan the ghost life. has like multiple levels to it, which is nice. Mm. I think you can yeah. spread yeah. out a little you if you need a personal space. It really uh, mm. the ghost up some specs, but it, yeah. it's the inside actually works logistically with the exterior as well. Whereas the mm. Falcon is a, a TARDIS <laughs> that does not possibly work with the inside and outside dimensions, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that they, they just so yeah, if you're they living did. on the Falcon, you might just get lost turning corners because like you you wandered through an extra dimension. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You might slowly lose your mind of like a total Lovecraftian non-Euclidean <laughs> angle thing. It's like, wait, I'm somehow inside this, but it doesn't work. Uh <laughs> Ken, you're looking up stats. I know you're thinking about livability. What do you got? Yeah, yeah. I, I what I love about the show is we really truly just dive in and and even uh, if we don't know or even if we know the topics, uh the goal's not to do a lot of pre-research, so I am looking up the the sizes, but I, livability, yeah, look, the, the ghost does win a lot. Alex, I, I, I agree with you on the, the space. I wouldn't bring anyone with me. It just, I just have a, a gym, a studio, video game room. I'd, I'd have it all for myself. Yeah, I might sad be sad mansion of the ghost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, but Han's Falcon or the Falcon that, you know, kind of sticks around, that, that period of Lando's Falcon is great, and I love it. I consider that like one of those urban mixed use apartments that's like above a mall where it's just it's it's the rent on that's got to be too much. And I don't know if I feel comfortable in it. I need a I need maybe a a dirty towel just left on a couch. Uh, You know, I need a a board game half halfway played. I think even livability, I might want to go to the the Falcon unless I want to grow and expand as 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 a person. And, and a man and, and, and change, I'd, I'd maybe then have to go to the ghost. If I mm. become well, a, better, we don't want a better version of myself. Yeah. W- would you live, would you feel more comfortable if uh, Zeb had control of the ghost for like a week and just made it filthy? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'd, I'd like that. Yeah. <laughs> that would work. Uh, Jennifer, uh, where do you weigh in on the livability idea? A hundred percent the ghost. That's why I can be swayed because it just seems homey, Mm. right? It's cozy. It's practical. It's reliable. These are things that I need right now, but I love vintage (laughs) things and I, and I, I like old things. I live in a hundred year old house. So I'm drawn to the Falcon. That's why initially I wanted to go with the Falcon. But if I look at the inside, I'm like, this isn't cozy. I could cozy it up. Right. Maybe that's Mm -hmm. what I do is I, mm-hmm. I renovate it a little bit. Or Lando's. Lando's is pretty sweet. Uh, but I really like the picture of you inheriting Han's filthy-ass Falcon <sighs> and just yeah. going in there with like 800 uh, throw pillows and just a throw pillow for every Han stain. Some <laughs> you candles, <gotta> really, <laughs> you know, some nice rugs. We could really make it nice. It's yeah. what, what you're talking about is the great unknown of what I, I would say is now Ray's Falcon, where we're oh. going to see what she does with the place. You know, that that's an un, unknown quantity as we look towards a, a Ray Jedi Order movie. Is she going to have the Falcon and is it going to have her own posters up, her own board games there? Is Chewie still around or is he finally going home to his family? All those kind of questions. It, uh, Jen, I'm, I, I think you're already looking to the future. Yeah. And the history, the history of the Falcon, right? That can't be overlooked. 
Well, I want, yeah, I want to, I want to talk about that, but I want to, I want to go back quickly for something about this livability discussion. And uh, Alex, I believe you, you made the analogy that the ghost is just like a much more like it's a minivan. It's, it's good and solid and, and reliable. Now, <laughs> here's a question: Is there an actual inherent difference between the ghost as a sort of minivan, and whereas the Falcon's a little bit more of a, a big hot rod? Or is that entirely down to the maintenance? Could the Falcon be just as cool, just as fast, and actually be well taken care of? Because I kind of, here's where I'm coming at. I feel like if Han and Hera were having this fight, Han would be like, the Falcon's better because it's stripped down, everything's exposed, blah, 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 blah. And Hera would be like, my ship is just as fast, and I clean and do basic maintenance. <laughs> you are you are claiming it's a hot rod because you're just a man of of chaos and, and garbage. Mm. Uh, how do how do we feel about that? Is there an inherent difference, or is it just Hera and Han take care of their ships differently? I, I think it's that. I, I think that Han spends so much time uh, making adjustments and modifications. Like it can look like that on the outside, and that makes complete sense. But it doesn't have to look like that on the inside too. Uh, <laughs> I think he could have like a Han Falcon on the outside and a Lando Falcon on the inside if he cared to. Uh, mm. Yeah, but but he just doesn't. Yeah, that's what I'm going to tell my doctor when that's I true. go for my next physical. Like I don't I don't care what I look like on the outside, but I need to be Lando on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make sure that's taken care of. Uh, to be Molly, fair, Lando Lando's version of the Falcon I love, but mm -hmm. I don't know if I could do the proper upkeep to keep it looking that way. <laughs> It's a mm. lot of white. It mm. is. And it's it's almost too clean. And so for, for the mm. ghost, I like that it is more lived in. You've got all of Sabine's art kind mm -hmm. of like displayed on the walls. And I also feel like the the Falcon, didn't Han put like a little kitchen in the Falcon just for Leia? And she kind of laughed and was like, I'm not cooking. Mm -hmm. But I, mm -hmm. I imagine there's probably a better kitchen area in the ghost. And I like to cook, so yeah, that's a they, they do have that little living room area. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. yeah, they can get there, we, you sit together, and watch hollow videos, and eat, and yell mm. at each other, just like a real family. Um, <laughs> that's right, they do have that little area. I forgot. Yeah. It was like, you know, we haven't really it, seen that stuff. It is. Yes, it that, is. That makes sense. It's a. It's a flying little house. Uh, yeah. But Jennifer, you were talking about the the pure history of the Falcon and being moved by that. So, what are your thoughts there? I just would think of all the adventures that the Falcon has gone on, all the things that it's seen, I, um, you know, um, what is it, uh, making the ship seem like it's a, a real living being. Because it kind of feels like that. It's its mm -hmm. own character. And I yeah, like that when you true. go to the vintage shop and you take an antique piece and you're like, what? what is this antique piece seen? That's what I see with the Falcon. But we love the crew of the ghost. So I, I don't know. I'm torn. I can't decide anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's a whole thing if we we're going to collect the actual characters, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I get the crew of the ghost. It's the, the, the real life Haslab. We actually get them. Uh, Ken, are you swayed by the pure history of the Falcon, either like Jennifer's saying, in Galaxy of like it's it's a storied ship or, yeah. or with your own life relationship? <laughs> Uh, yeah, look, I'll start here. I think the ghost has now got a pretty good bit of history it can draw upon, especially after the Battle of Exegol. But for me, I, I'm with you, Jen. I live, I live in a a 104 year old house right now, uh, and and I, I, you know, it's like a heritage site. You know, you you got stories, you got scars, you got things uh, you could charge for tours. There's a lot of things uh, I think you could do, and and uh, I would probably be swayed. Yeah, I'd, I'd like the history of the Falcon over the ghost ghost history. They, again, I don't want to take anything anything away from the ghosts. Uh, accomplishments as a ship. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, the, maybe the Falcon's haunted, but the other ship is called the Ghost. So uh, that <laughs> seems like BS. Uh, Molly, how are you affected by this idea of history? Of uh, th Does the Falcon feel more lived in, even though we've seen, you know, the Rebels actually live in the Ghost? I, the, the history of the two ships t doesn't really affect me as much. I, I hmm. feel like we are used to seeing the Falcon, but after we just rewatched Rebels not too long ago, I feel like we see so much of the interior of the ghosts that I feel like I did live there while we were watching that show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it, it kind of comes down to what I'm feel more familiar and, and like at home with, mm -hmm. which you'd think I would feel more familiar with 
the Falcon because it's been around for a lot longer. But for some reason, I'm leaning towards Ghost. It's just it's a that's the great power of storytelling because the Falcon in all the scenes we get in, and even in books kind of hints at the livability. You know, I love the passage where where um, you know the, we're learning about kitchens and showers and you know things like that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that where Chewie takes a shower in Lando's Falcon and uses all his nice hair right. <laughs> <laughs> product. Uh, but we, it's always the storytelling is always kind of hinting at the livability of the Falcon, whereas the Ghost is just spending so much time. Uh, yeah. Alex, how do you feel about the history? Are you moved by the history of the Falcon to go? It's a more storied historic ship. <laughs> What Jennifer made me think of is that I would still want to live in the ghost, but the Falcon would be like an amazing Airbnb because it's like a little <laughs> studio apartment, really. Yeah, yeah. That you can just go, you live there for a few days, maybe a week, and you're like, wow, that was awesome. But I can't wait to go back home where there's a little more space. Uh, but we got to be on the Falcon for a while. Uh, I, I just think that I would want to be able to spread out a little more. I think Molly and I would need separate rooms on occasion so we didn't drive each other crazy. Uh, <laughs> That's true. But, but I would still want to go visit the Falcon. So like an Airbnb, Airbnb. to experience all that history would be mm. like perfect for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. The, the Falcon is the Catalina Island getaway of Star Wars. <laughs> love it. Love it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, well, let's talk a little bit then about uh, more... Uh, in universe of i think what what you know han and hera they, they kind of had a little face off in in one of the i'm forgetting the title of the animated show uh, forces, forces of destiny forces of destiny yeah, yeah. uh but i think where, where this conversation would be if, if other people in the rebel alliance were, were having this conversation of <laughs> uh i'm about the actual abilities of the ship like if you were in trouble and you were being rescued if you were like a rebel pilot you were absolutely surrounded gonna die and you got a message that one of these ships is coming to your rescue are you like mm -hmm. pumping mm -hmm. your fist for one or the other or are you like uh oh i'm done <laughs> oh my gosh uh, i mean we've I, been talking I, about the the fact that the ghost seems to be maybe a little bit more reliable the falcon has uh is known for making these <laughs> big achievements but it does break down a lot too that's this true. is true uh, that, that's, that's I, I think that everyone except for Han and Lando treat the Falcon like it's garbage. Mm. Like everyone yeah. looks at it and says, <laughs> what a piece of junk. This bucket of bolts will never make it past the blockade. Like only Han and Lando who truly know how the ship runs and mm. operates seem to respect it. So mm -hmm. I feel like just a random rebel would be like don't worry help us on the way oh no it's the falcon like <laughs> i feel like that would be their response they would still make it out and then they would have an incredible story to tell because yeah. han did something insane uh whereas the ghost would show up harrow would collect them and they'd get away just fine like <laughs> i think it, yeah, it comes down to the history that maybe the falcon has all this crazy history because it is the way it is and the ghost has some good stories but not quite like falcon level stories yeah mm -hmm. Th and th those yeah those are wonderful points uh i'm laughing because yeah there's something about the hubris of lando and han that that drives the ship maybe even farther than it should and and if if hera and her team's on board you, you got you know, there's a better track record on paper i think uh, but I, I always think the measure it's hard to measure the heart right and, and the falcon uh, does Molly's right? It, it you, good chance you get on the ship and then it just and you're stuck there. But but I, it's it's I, I I'm I'm going to lean on the heart of the Falcon, uh, which you know we could also say has something to do with L three. I'm going to go the heart of the Falcon is going to mm. in this scenario. I'd rather have the Falcon come get me if I was a, a rebel soldier. Yeah, I think if I was a rebel, I would be happy to hear that either of them were coming. I would sure. think if if Kara is an amazing, but I would you know what I would say. Great, great. A ghost falcon, that's nice. Who's piloting them? Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Is, yeah. Uh, a part of the ghost's success rate is, of course, Hera's great piloting skill, but particularly the falcon. The falcon, the ship itself is amazing, but, uh, you know, if it was, I don't want to insult anybody's favorite uh, pilot or anything, but if it was, if they're like, the falcon's coming to rescue, Han's busy, it's Derek Hobby Clivian, I'd be like, oh, I'm done, right? <laughs> The, the yeah, part of the yeah. magic of the Falcon is Han knowing the tricks of mm -hmm. the ship 
end of the trade. It's like, all right, if it's Han and the Falcon, then I'm okay. If it's anybody he knows else, where to hit it when it starts mm-hmm. to shut down? Like, <laughs> right, yeah, right. I need to have that knowledge. Yeah, or yeah. Ray, because Ray, Ray also seems to have instincts of uh, where to hit the Falcon and what to rip off. <laughs> <laughs> I bypass the compressor. <laughs> yeah, but if it's Han, uh, even if it falls apart, if it's if like a thing fell off the Falcon, if I was being rescued and a part fell off the Falcon, I would have been like, I bet Han Solo did that on purpose. Is a mm. cool yeah. trick. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Uh, mm. Jennifer, uh, would you rather be rescued by the Falcon or the Ghost? Just in visualizing being in danger. Yeah, I would want Han Han and Chewie to rescue me on the Falcon. Just because I know that no matter what curveball was thrown at us, that we could we could make it through. Mm-hmm. They'll mm-hmm. always find a way. Mm-hmm. Um, at least that's how mm-hmm. it is in the, the movies and the stories. <laughs> 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 Let's hope so in real life. And, and, and this isn't about the ghost failing. It's just, again, the Falcon. Right. It's been there for us. Yes. Yeah. It's yes. always been there for us. Uh, I think are, you you might be scared to hear that the go- the Falcon was coming to rescue you. You know mm-hmm. you're gonna make it out, but you're just you're gonna be grateful afterwards for the story. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's like, well, <laughs> I lost an arm, but <laughs> great story. <laughs> mm-hmm. Han rescued me, and then a part of the ship fell on me. But anyway, it was great. Um, d- is there any um wait for any of you on just the aesthetic? Uh obviously going back to the beginning and and w- with the falcon and whatever age you were when you first encountered it the falcon is just cool because it's got this great charm of it's a weird mm-hmm. shape but it, you know it's that underdog ship uh obviously people love the ghost they paid hundreds of dollars for it on the Haslab. um mm-hmm. it's a family home all those things but are you weighted all by which one is to you cooler uh molly mm. I mean, like I said about if we're talking about Lando's Falcon, I think the aesthetic of his version of the Falcon is a little cooler. But again, upkeep wise, if I were living there, it probably wouldn't stay that cool for that long. (laughs) So cool factor for me, I think now that I'm a little older, I'm I'm more worried about reliability (laughs) and cool factor. (laughs) It's starting to feel like Lando's Falcon is more like a hot rod. And then Han's Falcon is like the Volkswagen bus that I had growing up that my dad had Jerry rigged together and <laughs> could only, he was the only one that could start it and drive it. No one else could. Yeah. So mm. he had a screwdriver yeah. for the key, right? Screwdriver for, for not. Wow. Oh yeah. The, the ignition, the ignition was wow. just a screwdriver. <laughs> did he leave it stuck in or did he stick it in every time? He left it. No one was going to steal that thing. No one could get it running. <laughs> but they look so cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love. I love the way you're analyzing this about uh, you know age and perspective and reliability. I was, I don't know why my mind, I need to book a physical so my mind is on body things. But it's just imagining like going into a physical and you know asking your doctor like, "Does my kidney work?" And like, "Yeah, but does it look cool?" And like, "What do you care? <laughs> does it work?" Is the important thing. Uh, in the car comparison, amazing. Uh, Ken, are you affected by the uh, the coolness factor? I am, and I, and I was raised in a Volkswagen van, two of them actually for a while with my dad. No 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 screwdrivers needed, but uh, that, that you're making me think about some things, Molly. In fact, that we had no seatbelts in the back uh, was part no of the seatbelts. fun. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I am. This is this is where the ghost makes great um, strides in my mind towards uh, winning this race. I grew up with the Falcon, obviously. Love the Falcon. Love design. It's it's a once in a lifetime kind of design because it shouldn't work. It's kind of awkward, and that's kind of the appeal of it. It's even in story. They that's the you, you came here and that thing like, like it's all there. Um, but the ghost for being so, again, this is where it's something new. Uh, we first learned about it in 2014, and it felt so familiar. It felt right, and, and it and it pulled. It reached back and pulled some of the old Star Wars aesthetic forward in this new era and it felt comfortable. It felt home despite me never stepping foot in it. So, and it's, and it's more balanced looking, right? It's not, it doesn't look like I'm like flopping you like the Falcon, the Falcon <laughs> shouldn't work. The Falcon shouldn't work, which is part of, again, the part of the Falcon's appeal overall. Um, but the, yeah, I'm affected. If it was just purely on uh, the look, I, the ghost oddly has a little bit of a leg up for me. Wow. Yeah, no, I mean, that makes sense. Cause in some ways, just in real world terms, it's got this challenge of kind of evoking the mm. falcon well <laughs> it really is like yeah. what if the falcon was stable that does seem to be the design approach <laughs> to the mm-hmm. ghost mm-hmm. and it's really really effective it's got an yeah. iconic 
uh, silhouette. It's got some of the absolute charm of the lines and the angles in the little bits of the Falcon. It's amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. Alex, how do you feel about cool factor? I, I definitely think the Falcon is cooler. I think it has more character. I love all of the exposed elements. Like I love in Solo watching it go from sleek and beautiful to just pieces of it getting torn off. And then Han never replaced them. Uh, I I like the way that that looks and the lived in factor. It's a car that I could never handle myself, but I can look at it and be like, that's awesome. Yeah. This is yeah. hilarious to me because we've been changing up our background in the filming room and mm. we had all these cables that were in the shot and exposed and it was driving me nuts. And I just spent <laughs> a bunch of time yesterday taping them down to the side so you couldn't see them and Alex could care less. So this makes total <laughs> sense. <laughs> yeah, there was just like awesome. cables. It looks cool like a falcon. <laughs> uh, yeah, if, if Han had any sort of YouTube show, it would definitely just be with a laptop open here looking straight up his nostrils. Like, no care. <laughs> no care about the aesthetic. Uh, there. Jennifer, have you weighed in on the coolness factor? No, but I always go to what is synonymous with Star Wars. And for me, obviously, the Falcon, I think of. You can see the Falcon anywhere on any piece of art, a shirt. You know it's Star Wars. And obviously, it's not fair because it's been around for a lot longer. Mm -hmm. But that's where my heart goes. It's just because of like, ah, oh, Star Wars. Um, but the Ghost is a nice looking ship. It's definitely you, more balanced. The, we've been talking about the the car analogy in, in in your in your current life, if you had to pick between two cars and you knew one was a more reliable car, but it was ugly as hell, and one was like, eh, it's not quite as reliable, but it's got amazing lines, which would you buy? <sighs> My husband really wanted us to get a minivan. And I was like, I'm not getting a minivan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not, I don't have a hot rod or anything, but like, I always want, <laughs> I, I want it to be reliable though. It can't break down. What am I mm -hmm. going to do? My four-year-old be like, well, let's walk. So yeah. I'll have to go with a reliable ship because I'm a mom. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> I have See, to go with uh, a reliable ship. We, I uh, rented a, for my bachelorette party, I rented a minivan. And that thing was pretty cool. It's got a lot of room, right? It can be a party van. Yeah. We'll make it a we party We turned it van. into a party We're van. We're about okay. to go on a bachelor party for my friend. And one of our buddies rented a man van. And we're like, great. Awesome. Like, What's a, it doesn't have to look cool. What's a man van? It's a minivan with men in it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. So if he rented a man van, man does man. it come preloaded with men? Or <laughs> oh, no. I hope so. It only <laughs> becomes a man van once friends. you all get into it. Oh I think my it gosh. fits like seven people. Okay. But like, are, when you, this is another, this is another conversation. When you think minivan, like I'm thinking the Ford Aerostar, I'm thinking the car I drove as a kid, the Mazda MPV van. Like, is that what you're thinking? Is that a man van, Alex? Is that Ford uh, Aerostar? I, I haven't seen a picture of it yet. I okay. was just told a minivan okay. was rented. Got it. Okay. They're really nice and they have so much leg room. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, being sweet again. Uh, <laughs> 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 man, van. Oh. Uh, the, yeah, oh, on on my college ship, a man, van. That ain't happening on Harris ship. Uh, all right, let's. Uh, we, we've been able to look at this from uh, many different angles. Uh, let's get into our final torturous vote. Uh, Ken, do you want to go first? Uh, look, I, with, I, I, I said I'd st I start one spot. It was a Falcon. I could be pushed to the ghost, but I, 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 I haven't heard enough evidence presented uh, to take the Falcon away from my heart. And it's a ship I've always, it, it, well, look, I cried when I turned the corner and saw it at Galaxy's Edge. I got so much joy of taking that ride and, and getting to punch it and, and, and taking it in, into the light speed. I, mm. If they had done, if there was a ghost ride, a Rebels Run ride or something like that, uh, maybe, maybe I'd have a different feeling, but I'm still sticking with the Falcon. Yeah, that, that's a good point. When I got to punch it <laughs> the mm -hmm. first time, I, I had been on that ride like three times before I got to be the one who punched it and oh, punching it. So great. Uh, yeah. Molly, do you know your decision? I think so. I think I'm going to go with the ghost just mm -hmm. because it, it does feel like I, I like the ability to have more people there. It feels like you could turn that into a party bus, but it could also be cozy, livable. I could cook a nice meal in there. 
Um, and you're getting two ships for one. So yeah, I, I like I like the little phantom too. Yeah. I mean, we're talking a lot about, uh, you know, calling the ghost a minivan, reasonable, reliable, but it's still cool, right? I mean, oh, it, it's, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. It's not like, oh my God, you just settled down with a hatchback. Like the ghost is still cool. Uh, <laughs> Jennifer, do you know your vote? I don't know anymore. Come back to me. <laughs> no, okay. okay I'll, I'll decide. I'll decide. I'll decide. Okay. If this was a true fantasy of what I would uh, like, a Falcon. That's where my heart goes. But uh, looking at all the stats now, what everyone has presented, I'm going with a ghost. Wow. I, it's where I would want to live. Mm -hmm. I know wow. that I would feel more comfortable there. And right now, for me, comfort is key because <laughs> I'm stressed out. So, <laughs> <I understand. laughs> yeah. You, you, you got a dining room, you got bunk beds for the kids, you got a play area, you got a, a ship that you and your husband can escape on for a vacation and just. Leave your kids on the ghost, right? <laughs> Molly mentioned beautiful art. I love it. It mm. just makes yeah. sense. Okay, yeah. two for the ghost, one for the falcon. Uh, uh, Alex, what do you got? Uh, I wasn't really uh, swayed through our discussion. I, I, I still, basically everything we talked about was everything that had gone through my head where I think if I had to choose one to live on, it's the ghost for all those reasons. But I see that as like my lack of, of adventurous spirit and if it, if we were in star wars then i would want the falcon the falcon is the the ken just like reminded me of the first time i was in galaxy's edge and we were getting ready to do the ride mm -hmm. and there's a great turn when you like turn a corner in a hallway and now you're on the falcon and i just wasn't expecting it and i remember like my jaw dropping yeah. and yeah. i i just think that the falcon is so much of an icon of star wars that i have to go with it yeah understandable understandable and the ghost uh, it, the, it has risen to an amazing level of love and prominence in the short amount of time it's existed compared to the falcon which is a huge uh, tribute um yeah. to to that uh i finally I, I was leaning toward ghost because of the livability and sometimes i feel like okay okay i gotta i gotta focus <laughs> i gotta make some better choices in life uh the ghost has so much to recommend it uh, but the comparison to real life cars broke me uh, hmm. Hmm. and the wonderful story of the screwdriver in the ignition. Uh, <laughs> I, I've had reliable cars. My wife and I have had our Toyota Yaris for over a decade. It's so reliable. It's so good. It's the ghost. I haven't, but I haven't taken good as care of it. It's a little banged up hair. would have got that fixed. But uh, Ken and I both had the same first car, which was a Ford Fairmont, which is every car you've ever seen destroyed from a movie or TV show in the 70s, just a big box. <laughs> if you asked in the 70s or the 80s for a four-year-old to draw a car, they would draw a Ford Fairmont. <laughs> it looks like it was invented by a four-year-old of just like, what is car? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's what the Ford Fairmont was. But it had these, these taillights that looked like the back of the Falcon's lights. Yeah. And it was not reliable at all. <laughs> but it was so cool. It was so much fun and it did get me to where i needed to go eventually and i have to admit that if somebody said you can have a brand new toyota yaris or we have fixed up your 78 powder blue ford fairmont as best we can i would not pause for a second and i would take that ford fairmont so for myself i gotta give it to the falcon i think i think that's a really good way to look at it if just if someone showed up if if hera and han parked their ships outside and they were like you can have one of these. And I'm like, I know I can't handle the Falcon, but I'll learn. I'll change who I am. <laughs> and I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll learn well, shit. Means. There you go. Uh, but just a little bit, the Falcon wins because we're willing to change for it. It's not healthy, but it's fun. <laughs> and that is the nature of the Falcon. Uh, thank you, uh, Alex and Molly, for joining us. We're lucky uh, to be having a recording session here. The episodes will come out uh, over time. But we're going to just keep right on rolling and we're going to decide some more difficult things in the world of Star Wars and the world of life itself. Ken, do you want to take us home? 
I do, I do. Also, the real winner today, Ford Fairmonts, which I've dreamed of driving that car again, and it was horrible, but man, it was memorable. The trunk space alone is worth the price of $50 <laughs> it costs. Uh, we're the Four Center Pod, uh, Four Center Podcast, and we are found on a lot of spots, including Twitter and threads at Four Center Pod. We're on Facebook at Four Center Podcast. Instagram, subscribe here on YouTube if you're watching or, or if you're listening. Head over there, but if you're listening, you can find us uh, on a lot of spots where podcasts are found. Just search, you'll find us, T Public dot com slash user slash four centers we can buy merch and you can support us directly at patreon.com slash four center we just released our first episode of 007 centers exclusive to patreon supporters or it's available uh, for purchase in the patreon shop uh two and a half plus hours of a deep dive discussion on casino real is the first one there follow me at ken knapsack or go to my website ken joseph where can they find and follow you sir yeah, you can find me on all the social media at Joseph Scrimshaw, and you can go to my website, josephscrimshaw.com, to hear about upcoming screenings of films, including The Nightmare Adorable, uh, which Ken is in, which will be having its L.A. premiere on Sunday, February 25th at 2 p.m. Info is on my website. Now, Jennifer, the Jenny Landa I met in 2014, I don't know if she would have selected the ghost, but where can they find Jennifer Landa now? <laughs> You can find me on YouTube and Instagram at Jennifer Landa or TikTok at Jennifer Landa 1138. Alex and Molly, it's always wonderful to have you here. We appreciate uh, you both. Uh, I love hanging out on you, with, with you all on Saturday mornings with my coffee, my breakfast burrito, and your Q&A videos while I play <laughs> some Madden. It's a fun, relaxing time. But tell us where they can find and follow you and any cool things uh, you might want them to know about. We're on YouTube and Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and all those places at Star Wars Explained. Yeah, uh, all the social medias on Star Wars Explain. You can find me on Twitter at Molly Damon. You can also find me over on another show that I'm on called A Certain Point of View, talking all things pop culture. And having not so newlywed contests that I was watching the other night as well. <laughs> you all had red cheeks and ears from drinking and answering questions, and it was fun. Well, that is it. Thank you, Joseph, for taking us through. You've been watching and listening to Force Center, and we have decided it all right here. The Falcon's the winner on this objective. See you next time.